Hello everyone, Dr. G here. I thought I'd bring you something interesting that came across my Twitter feed a little while back. Why don't I just jump into it, shall we? An interesting article on psychology today, and I thought I'd just read it to you because it's oh so fascinating. It comes to us from Samantha Smithstein, a phys D that is a licensed clinical and forensic psychologist. But let's get to the uh, article that she wrote about instead, shall we? Because it's, it's kind of interesting. It starts off... Uh, quoting a report from January 2015, the general population survey of a thousand people aged 18 to 34 was conducted by Fusion Media. In it, they found that 50% of the respondents said that their gender is a spectrum and that some people fall outside conventional categories. Full stop there. Um, is this an appeal to popularity? It's a study. It's a survey. So is it worth it? Does it have any merit? Is it useful to anyone? Well, let's find out. Let's look up Fusion Media. Well, the first thing on the website, there was no good reason for Chris Brown to be on Blackish. Really? All right. Lots of men view women like Mike Pence does. They just don't talk about it. Claiming that you can read minds, that's pretty impressive. Good luck with that. <sighs> let's see. Let's scroll down a little bit. North Carolina's governor tries and fails to sell anti LGBTQ RST XYZ WPDQ bill that he just saw. Completely biased. That's very obvious just by the few articles they have right on their main website. And you're citing a survey from them? You're supposed to be a doctor. Could you please act like one when you're publishing an article on something like Psychology Today? Psychology used to be somewhat reputable, but now. With shit like this, it's it's not. Let's continue. Last year, three people in the United States had their gender legally changed to non-binary. Great, so when you get pulled over by a cop and they read your license, they're going to look at you and see that you're a woman. Read on your license says non-binary, and then they're going to go, what the hell is that? And then they're going to give some lip, like, it's non-binary, you need to respect my gender. And then they get corded off in handcuffs, eventually, for lipping off to a cop. At its surface, this appears revolutionary, and even threatening for many Americans. Threatening? How is it threatening that you guys are delusional? I, okay. And revolutionary? N not really. I understand that your title is The Gender Revolution Is Here. But there's no revolution to be had. People have been expressing their gender between male and female all over the place. But going by non-binary, for example, negates biology. Good luck with that. Um, a lot of the people that argue that gender is a spectrum try to negate biology. In a previous thing that I've covered, basically feminism tries to ignore evolution in favor of this gender spectrum bullshit that has been debunked so many times, it's ridiculous. There are studies that prove it false. There are echo chambers, I'm not going to call them studies because I've read these studies and they preclude things that aren't true before they even try to discuss what they're trying to prove. For, for many, and perhaps most people in, in around the United States, a simple male-female binary gender system does not come close to fitting their actual experience. Okay. Sure. The, they're male. They got junk. But they want to act like a dude sometimes and then cry at weddings and whatnot. It's called being human, not called being a different gender. Expressing one's emotions in one way or another is a different set of attitudes and our brains are so magnificent that they can adjust Given any situation, but that does not change your biology it just doesn't Yes, your brain's chemistry can change. No, that does not change your biology Worse this binary system has served as a tool for oppression. Oh really? Feminist and LGBTQQIRXTUVWXYZABTCDQXVWRTRPT activists have posited that gender is a social construct and the duality of gender is not a fundamental truth but a perspective. The duality of gender is not a fundamental truth. 
Yet you still work within the two gender system, don't you? It is not a perspective. It is grounded in biology. How you express your gender is a different issue. What your gender is, is pretty concrete. The only people that have issues with this that I know of, both psychological and physical, are transgender people who transition from male to female, female to male, but they are transitioning between one of the two binary genders. Male to female, female to male. That does not make them a spectrum. This perspective or construct is oppressive to us all. That's a bold claim. Anything to back it up? Let's find out. Children are ridiculed and or bullied for even the smallest deviation from acceptable behavior. Especially boys who appear to act in some way feminine, reinforcing the idea that feminine or female is less than masculine or male. Less than. There's my contentious issue. You were starting off with a confirmation bias in your opening remarks, and then you step into relativism, and you're trying to rationalize your opinion. By less than, you mean weaker in some fashion, and typically women are weaker than men because men have more muscle mass, more body mass, we're meant to be bigger biologically. So if we're going by biological differences, then yes, men are stronger or greater than women, but only in strength. Because when it comes to the mind, they're just different. And they're not less than, they're not greater than, they're different. Different does not mean worse. Different does not mean better. Different means not the same. So if you're putting negative connotations on it, immediately I must assume that you believe that you are weaker than men in some fashion. Because that seems an awful lot like projection to me. Girls tend to be given more leeway for being tomboys until they hit puberty when they are expected to conform to a more submissive and feminine role. Who says? Submissive? Assuming that women take a submissive role because you say so is your projection that women are weaker than men. Don't make assumptions that you can't back up. There's nothing to say other than physiological strength that women are weaker than men. They're not. They're different, but not less than. Just by this preconceived notion, I can already conclude that your argument, at least for this point, that the binary system has served a tool for oppression is based on the false pretense that women are weaker or less than men. This false pretense is your problem, not the rest of the world's. So try not to project your problems on somebody else. Not only does this process reinforce imaginary constructs, but it takes us all prisoner. Children with sex characteristics of boys grow up to be men who can't remember how to be vulnerable, feel deeply, and love other men. Children with the sex characteristics of girls grow up to be women who are afraid to be in their power. We can't be vulnerable, feel deeply, or love other men. Are you mental? Seriously? Where did you grow up in the 1940s where men were manly men and didn't express emotion? And even then it was bullshit? This is a very ill-conceived motion. It, it seems to me that you fail to understand the emotional expression of men. Because that is not true. None of it is true. Uh, remember how to be vulnerable is not true. Remember to feel deeply is not true. Remember to love other men. That's not true, especially for gay people. But man to man, no, that's not true. That is so not true. If I were to use a feminist argument, you're not a man. So don't project your assumptions on us. That's stupid. You're assuming that we don't how know how to express our own emotions. But again, you also assume that women are less than men for some reason. Failing to note that men express things differently than women. Are you therefore prescribing that women are superior in expression of feelings? Because that seems awfully like what you are trying to express here. And uh, that's bullshit. It's different. 
not better, not worse, different. So it continues on and tries to say that it's unclear why people are uncomfortable with transgender, gender fluid, non-binary, or gender conforming folks, non-conforming folks. Well, transgender is an anomaly. It's different. People don't like different. You know that we're a tribal and social species. So what happens to those that are outside the tribe or outside the social network? Are they ostracized? Oh, I think they are ostracized. And then when put into a social construct, as you're trying to project here, that gender is a social construct, you fail to recognize that our sociology is an in-group, out-group sociology. We tend to function in a herd mentality. We're tribal. But it's interesting here. You, you claim that this is an issue. My guess is that, as with any type of change that involves psychological and emotional growth and expansion, the unfamiliar feels scary and strange. Fixed ideas about people are comfortable. How is that a guess? So if they're being ostracized, then yeah, sure, that's bad behavior and it's not very cool. And it's also explained by tribalistic behavior, not to say that that's a good thing, but it is tribalistic nonetheless. Different is scary. You're all right there. Good job. But this revolution among mostly young people who challenge and dismantle gender constructs is hugely powerful and important. No, no, it's not. It's divisive and destructive to our modern society. All you're doing is dividing people up rather than celebrating their differences and moving forward and celebrating those. What really is horrendous about that claim is that you're trying to say that it's important to you. It's not important to anyone else. It's also important to you because women are less than men. You've stated so yourself. But then you give you a few definitions, and I'd like to address those as well, which is pretty fun. You have six total helpful definitions that might help somebody deconstruct this weird and bizarre world that you've constructed. Sex characteristics, body structures directly concerned with reproduction, physical attributes that have traditionally been used as a proxy for gender. Yeah, sex characteristics, male, female, genitalia. Yeah, we get that. Gender, the behavioral, cultural, and psychological traits typically associated with one sex. Well, you define, you simplified the definition here. So let's define gender. I think you're close, but let's, let's expand it because clearly you've redefined it to fit your narrative. Either of the two sexes, male and female, especially when considered with reference to social or cultural differences rather than biological ones. The term is also used more broadly to denote a range of identities that do not correspond to established ideas of male and female. And then it goes and expands it a little bit. Members of a particular gender considered as a group. The fact or condition of belonging or identifying to a particular gender. What's fun about the way you redefined it, and let's reread that, the uh, Behavior, cultural, psychological traits typically associated with one sex. And the first part of the definition is either of the two sexes. And then you're trying to include non-binary. Well, non-binary excludes male and female biology. So that is an impossibility. You're not a man because you decide to weightlift or bodybuild. You're still a woman. Unless you decide to grow a penis somehow. You cannot change your sex. You can express your gender in your own special way, which is actually called individualism and not trying to lump people into groups, which is also why you decided to call it a social construct, meaning that it would have to be a social interaction between multiple people. The problem with a social interaction with multiple people is it excludes the idea that the individual can express their own particular interests. So if this person is interested in a singular thing that is not typically associated with women, such as weightlifting or fighting or any of those sorts of things, they do not magically become a man or a non-binary, non-conforming, whatever the hell you want to call it, one of the letters of the alphabet. They're still female. Ronda Rousey, for example, is definitely a woman. However, she'd whoop your ass. 
She is strong. She is tough. And she does a, a sport that most girls do not do. And she seems awfully happy with what she was doing. It's uh, interesting that it steps into, especially when considered with reference to social or cultural differences rather than biological ones. So when you're talking about gender, you're talking about gender expression. One, the, the way one expresses what a male and female does. The separation of duties, as you will. There have been studies, and Dr. Peterson can attest to this because he did one himself, where in a truly equal society where all things and all laws make men and women equal in every aspect, women tend to take on more feminine roles. And you would say this is inaccurate and it's biased or there's laws there that are still... Uh, unequal and there's a long ways to go you'd find excuses in other words but in western societies women take on still effeminate roles why is that well biology has a lot to do with that you can't escape your biology period gender expression well i just talked about that but what's your definition the way in which a person expresses their gender identity typically through their appearance dress or behavior yes i fully agree with this definition this is the expression of how they feel but it is not an expression of their gender this is what i have issue with it's an expression of their individuality their particular taste and interests it is not an expression of their gender if a female decides to go punch a dude in the face repeatedly because they're a golden gloves boxer or if they're a woman that decides to go weightlifting and be an olympian weightlifter they are not expressing male traits and behaviors they're being individuals with particular interests that happen to align with the same kind of things men like to do doesn't make them a different gender and you have two more definitions here. Gender variance or gender nonconformity. Behavior or gender expression by an individual that does not match masculine or fem feminine gender norms. Uh, no, that's called gender expression and individuality. Once again, you missed the mark. And I think it centers down to your bias, which, which was very obvious in your opening remarks. Women are less than men in your eyes. Gender queer, also termed non-binary, a catch-all category for gender identities that are not exclusively masculine or feminine, identities which are thus outside the gender binary and cis normativity. Two made-up terms that really just irritate the shit out of me. Gender outside gender binary, so non-binary, which is non-existent, and cis normativity. Well, guess what? Male and female is normal. We are a two sex species. Our gender is initially determined by our biology. If you don't like this, suck it up, buttercup, because you're still wrong. So I think the root of this entire thing is women are less than men. According to you, this is not true. Women are different than men, not less than men. But that doesn't stop you from claiming this. And it definitely doesn't create a gender revolution. Completely ignoring evolutionary psychology, completely ignoring biology, completely ignoring the last 100,000 plus years of human development, all because of your feelings that women are less than men that's all the time i got for this crap i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please subscribe like i hate spilling myself but whatever i also put this to minds.com because i really love that format and i'll see you next time